Welcome to March's LeetCo Challenge. Today's problem is short encoding of words. A valid encoding of an array of words is any reference string and array of indices such that words length equals indices length. The reference string ends with or the reference string s ends with the hash character, and for each index, the substring of s starting from indices i and up to the next hash character is equal to words i. So in other words, if we had an array like this, time me bell, uh, this string encoding would take care of me because me is going to be a suffix of time. You can see that me exists inside of time, so we don't actually need that inside of our um, string encoding. Keep note, it has to be a suffix, so say that we had the word im, like im instead. I am is a substring of time, but it doesn't reach the very end. So that wouldn't count. We would have to add that into our string coding as well as I am. Okay, so knowing that, what could we do? Well, like the very straightforward method is to go through every word and check inside, check every other word to see if it's a suffix of a word. If it is, so say that we check time, see if it's a suffix of any other words. If it is, then we'll store that index number somewhere and then we'll remove it later when we do a string join with the hash um, and then that will just take care of all the characters that we don't or, or the words that we already counted for inside of another word so let's start off with doing that method what we can do is first get the length of words and we'll just do a nested for loop we're going to check every single word to every other word uh, except itself so for i in range of n and for j in range of n. We'll first store the length of the word itself. So m will equal the length of words i. And we'll say if i does not equal j, and let's store like some sort of list with all the index numbers that we're going to remove. And let's see here, words, what we're checking to see is, is words j with the length of itself the pref the suffix is it equal to words i like this and if it is then we're going to add to our remove list we're going to remove the word i itself right and with them we can just break our loop we don't need to check all the other words here okay so now we'll have this remove list with all the words or the index numbers of the words that we can remove and what we could do then is we'll just do it in list comprehension for um, well for i in range of n again if i not in remove and I guess I can make this into a set maybe I should have made that a set to begin with but whatever and if that's the case then we will add the words i inside here. And then we could just do a string join using this hash character of this list here. So let me just make sure this looks right. This should return time hash bell. And we should have been able to get rem should have been able to get rid of the me all right so does that does look like it works keep note that i need to add another hash character and return the length not this string uh, but this isn't going to fly because it ends up becoming n squared and we hit a time limit exception so what can we do instead of this brute force method well instead of checking every word that we want to check for what if we just check every mm, like suffix inside the word because that could potentially be a lot less right instead of n squared it becomes something like n times the uh, max length of our words and since the length of the word is only seven uh, that would be a lot quicker right so we're going to take advantage of this constraint here and instead of doing this what we'll do is create some sort of set i'm just going to call it w we'll call it set of words now we'll still go through every single word here, um, but what we'll do instead, we'll say for 
uh, do we need to, we don't need to store the index number, so we'll say for w in words. Let's get the length of the word here. And we'll say for j in range of m. Now we'll check to see if it's, it's inside this set. And if it is, then we'll remove it. So we'll say, uh, not from, it's from one to m because we only care about these substring suffixes. We'll say if, let's see, were a w minus j, uh, minus j to the end, if this is in w, then we're gonna pop that off. We'll say remove this word. So now we should have a set of all the words that are not like suffixes. And then all we need to do is just go through those. So we'll say for, uh, let's see, for w in w, w's, and let's see if this works. Yep, and that would do the same thing. That would work. Um, so what I'll do now is just add a hash like this, and we'll return the length of the whole string. Just make sure that I got this right here. And let's see if this works. It looks like that's working. So this would work, and I like this solution because it's very elegant. Uh, but we could actually do better. Uh, there is another data structure that we could take advantage of, which is the word tree, right? The tree structure. I'm not a huge fan of word, uh, trees because you all you have to like, especially during an interview, you have to write out the whole class method. But just to be thorough, I'm going to go through the tree solution as well. Uh, if we had a tree, and if you remember, like trees have like a root and then they can like branch out to different letters. Um, like if we had the suffix inside here, like we could take account for all the ends and instead of storing the end of the word, say that we had like a, B, a C, D and A, C inside, we'll only, we'll, we'll store like the ends of the word somewhere inside of our tree and we'll only return the length, we'll store the length of the entire word at this um, list, and we'll only take the ones with no more children. Like so AC will not be counted because C still has a child, so we'll only count the ones that have children here. And that way we actually end up doing this in an O of N time complexity. Uh, we do use extra me um, memory, but so do we, we use extra memory here anyway, so. Uh, this would be more efficient. So let's try going through this method here. Uh, the first thing I need to do is form a tree node. And in the tree node, all there will be is a dictionary for all the children. So let's initialize here, self and self children equals just a dictionary of all the children. Next, I need to have the tree and this will be a little bit different. I'm going to store um, a, a root, which is going to be the tree node. The, tree, the root itself is going to be nothing, right? Because we could start off with many words, A, B, C, D, or go through all those. Uh, so the root's just going to be like where we start off with. And we'll also have to store, here I'm going to store a, a list with what's going to be a tuple of the tree node at the very end uh, to check to see if it has any more children as well as like the length of this word. And finally, I need to write the insert method. Uh, what we'll do is uh, we have to go through our root. So let's see, start with the root. Root is going to equal stuff.root. And we'll say for character in word. What do we want to do? We want to check to see if um, this C is inside what? Root.children. Well, I should say if not in the children, 
then we need to add it, right? So we say root dot children c is equal to a tree node, and we'll just move ahead our root to say root equals children c like this. And now, once we get to the very end, what we're going to do is append to our ends here a tuple of let's see the root as well as the length of our word. And I'm also going to add one here for that hash character. Okay, so now we have our data structure. Uh, the only thing that's going to be a little bit tricky is we have to, instead of inserting the words in order, we're going to move backwards because we care about the suffix, right? In a tree, we'll, it'll be like we're looking at the prefix. So instead, we'll make it backwards so that we'll account for that. And uh, that shouldn't be a problem. The, Algorithm should still remain the same. So first thing, we're going to initialize a tree node here. Not tree, a tree tree. Now for w in words, what we want to do? We are going to insert to our tree the word, but do it backwards. And we can do that to make it backwards. Now we have our tree structure. So um, we luckily store all the ends here. So what we'll do is say for tree.ends, we are going to take the node and the, uh, let's call it depth. And if node.children, um, uh, you know what, I'll just say if, node, if the length of the node.children is equal to zero, that means it's the end of the word. Right, so then we'll take the depth. And now we have all the lengths of all the words that don't have children, and we'll just sum that up. And let's return that. So let's see if this works. Looks like that works, so let's go ahead and submit it. Okay. Um, Huh. Okay, so I guess that's an edge case. Well, I'm just gonna take care of that by uh, just making it into a set. Um, nah, that, that should take care of that. I don't know if there's a better way to do it than that, but there we go. So, I mean, you can just take care of that edge case by making it into a set and make it back to list. Uh, this is a lot faster, but as you can see, it's, it's not as intuitive and it's always annoying having to like write these extra classes. So I don't know. Um, I think that second solution is good enough. Uh, but if you want to go deeper and you, you know, feel like a challenge, sure, go ahead with this tree solution. All right. Thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.